Um, but let's get started because we're a little bit late kicking off now. Um, thanks everyone for coming along and thanks to all of you who are listening on catch up as we do these days. But we're here to look, talk to NSCAD patron and all round art guardian, Bob and Roberta Smith. Um, I'm going to I have to start by saying thanks to Bob for he's he's working very hard for NCAD this week. I've got to say last night he was down in the House of Commons um, for the launch of a really important report called Art Now, um, which is all about the state of art, craft and design education in schools right now. And Bob made an incredibly powerful, moving contribution. Uh, to start things off, which um, I think gave the politicians something to think about, the politicians in the room. And one phrase sticks with me, Bob. Uh, you, you talked about art teachers as being the guardians of humankind or words very close to that. So mm, all that teachers on this call, no pressure, but that's you, guardians of, uh, of humankind. I, th I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna bank that one. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're here to talk about um, something that's going to help you in that quest to be the guardians of humankind, I hope. We're, we're talking about, of course, about Bob's lovely new book, which I have got here. And I can see uh, Bob's got uh, a, a well-thumbed and used copy in front of him. So I'm going to be asking Bob a few questions about, about the book um, and about his work. And, uh, and we're going to invite you to, to get involved, to, to get your pens out um, and join in. Uh, and hopefully there'll be time for questions from you guys as well. So that's that's the idea. Please do feel free to pop things in the chat as well as we go. And then we'll open things up properly for questions. So hopefully we're all happy with that. Right. Well, I'm going to start um, just by saying that we asked Bob to pick uh, a page from his book for us all to have have a, a try at. So try it for ourselves. And it's there, isn't it? Brilliant. Um, I can actually share a screen because I've took a, I've got a copy of the photo that you sent us. Um, I am terrified, obviously, that at this point any any attempt to use technology will fall flat, but I will I will share that at some point. But um, Bob, which page did you choose and why? Why? I chose uh, this page. I mean, they're all good pages, but <laughs> I thought it'd be fun uh, to draw some uh, facial features and then join them up and uh, creating unlikely, here's one I did earlier, creating unlikely faces, crowds, perhaps at a children's literary book festival, <laughs> which, which, are, which are, it's quite strange as an artist being invited to literary festivals, but uh, um, uh, the idea really is to draw something, and it's one of the key ideas in the book really, is to start somewhere and then end up somewhere different at the end of it and create something. I mean, it's the key, one of the, I mean, art does lots of things, doesn't it? But one of the key things about art is uh, is the kind of confidence to start somewhere, begin working on something, look at it again and think, aha, there's something going on here. And that could be pushed a bit further. And it's something that I do in my studio every day. I mean, when I, when I start painting, I, I don't know what the paintings are going to look at. It's not, in normal life, we... We plan things, we organize things, and we, we kind of don't want unexpected things to happen. But in the book, it takes the premise, the idea that a child in a classroom or at school or with its parent might say, uh, cats are the new dogs or cows are the new sheep. And the parent or the teacher might say, you made that up. Well, that would be a put down. But actually for art, that's exactly what we want people to do. We want people to make things up. It's all about, it's all about making things up. And actually we, make, we can make things up as artists. We can make things up as children. We can make things up as poets. We can make things up as writers. We can, people also make things up as, uh, as uh, mathematicians. They have ideas about things and seek proofs for them. And that, 
that kind, that's something about human intelligence. That's why last night I talked about AI and, and how actually art, teaching art in primary schools is going to weatherproof children for a, a, a new kind of technological phase, which we don't know quite how it's going to go at all. But actually, if we teach kids to uh, to uh, to think about their own creativity in terms of a kind of power and intelligence, really, they they will celebrate their human intelligence, which uh, which is creative, you know. So it's all about this. So the book really has lots of prompts in it. There are not many exemplars of how to do things. In fact, there are very few of those. It's mostly prompts. And really, you can draw what you want into the prompt. And weirdly, uh, with the prompt and then the affirmation at the end, strangely, it makes sense. And I've been, I've been working with kids, also uh, with... Uh, adults and that Joseph Colio, the children's laureate, did one of the drawings in, in this book, uh, uh, re reacted to one of the prompts. An amazing artist. Uh, oh yeah, here it is. So this is an amazing, amazing drawing done by, it's just a, it's a simple idea, taking a line for a walk, you know, that's the Bauhaus, Paul Clay. Mm -hmm. But he, uh, he's an artist called uh, Maurice Blick. He, uh, he makes sculpture where he delves into clay, find, creates a void, fills that up with plaster and pulls it out and creates a sculpture of a standing figure. Well, Morris's story is very powerful. Morris made his, made his first sculpture out of a carrot to give to his sister in Belson. Oh. And uh, he survived that experience. His sister didn't. But... Uh, but he came to the Royal Academy the other day. He grabbed five pens and made this drawing. And then he said, look, uh, there's a face. And you can see the face made up, constructed out of the process. So, so it's about, it is about this idea gently saying, have the confidence to start and you will, you'll get going. <laughs> that's, that's essentially what the book is about, and that actually will make you powerful. And the, the, there's some gentle ideas to think about power and, and confidence and selfhood and steam, all of those things, but also things about mathematics and geometry, you know, very gentle ways into thinking about this. Suitable, I think, for, you know, little kids, but also big kids like us. Well, good, because uh, I, I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So maybe I'm, I'm prime big kid. I, I'm st struck there, actually, by what you say about being gentle and the idea that you might not feel powerful when you start, but if you start, you will become powerful. But you have to start. and But start small. Because something that I think we're finding a lot um particularly in some of our primary school colleagues who maybe don't feel so confident in their practice as artists. They might not have a practice as, art as artists. Uh, they, they may not feel that they've got any knowledge. Um, and they look at the amazing stuff that's going out there. I know you were up with uh, Mandy Barrett um, and, and the amazing work at Gomesall. For some people that can feel quite intimidating as a teacher. So that message that actually just start, start small and it will build. I think that's actually an amazing message for teachers as well as children. So um, I, I hope that they will take that from this. <laughs> I, I, I love this page, I've got to say, and I love the fact that you've been adding to it as, as we've been uh, waiting to come on. <laughs> I'm going to share it so people can see it because we would love you folks who are listening here, um, hopefully you can see this, um, to, yeah, to try it out. So it, yeah, grab a, a blank piece of paper, grab, grab your pens. I've got my, my sharpies here. And we'll, we'll have a little bit of time before we finish. And we can all just go in and just do a bit of, uh, bit of drawing. Yeah. So hopefully you've got some pens to hand. Well, while we're, maybe we're going to do this at the end, but maybe we should do it all the way through. That's not a bad idea, is it? We draw eyes and 
<laughs> noses and mouths across the page in different I mean you can look at for prompts you can look at the other people on the uh, on the call <laughs> and draw those and gently put those uh, eyes together on the page and then what we'll do is we'll kind of draw some profiles and contours around that and suddenly a crowd will be staring at us <laughs> of unlikely uh, faces. We'll, we'll invite people to do a, to, to come on camera and, and hold up their piece of paper if they've got one. So it, let, let's hope we get some uh, some lovely. Uh, and then I think later on in the week you're going to uh, uh, we're going to pick some which uh, you know which and we'll send you a copy of the book. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, Diane's put put the info in the chat. I think if you uh, get involved, um, as as Bob says, you know, try it out for yourself. Uh, is it try, what's it try it now try it um a couple of hashtags we'd like you to use so that we can find you post them on social media put the tag on NCAD one so we can find you as well but the hashtags art is powerful is the key one the key one um and yeah we'll do a prize draw and one lucky person will get a copy of the book sent to them but we'll all be winners if we take part so let's all get get stuck in and take part but yeah have a, get get going if you've got your paper to hand um it's a lovely page I, i'm really struck by the banner at the top art has the power to make people feel seen um and there's a kind of there's a, there's a bit of work around the feel so that we can also read it as has the power to make people seen and there's something about that isn't there about about not feeling seen and recognized and understood that's i think that's quite a strong theme for a lot of young people right now a lot of children so I think it's not a bad place to start if you want to start anywhere because you don't have to start at the beginning or do you what what do you see as the sequence in this book Bob the journey <laughs> through it uh, the, so the journey of the journey of the book is uh, it talks about uh, it talks about uh, imagining the beginning and here I'm trying to think about links between kind of art and science and mathematics and intelligence in a weird way but it starts with um, a prompt to uh, to get kids to think about uh, the beginning of the universe and the big bang and to draw an image of the big bang before there were eyes <laughs> <laughs> to see the big bang uh, uh, but to but to uh, kind of make an image of the big of the big bang and to think about that and to think about uh planets and life on other planets perhaps and then to think about uh and then to throw in there the idea of what's beyond the big bang well what's beyond if you can try and imagine what's beyond the big bang what's beyond the universe time before the universe and time after uh, time surrounding the universe uh space beyond that it's in here it's in the it's it's uh, between your ears so then it becomes about so then the book then becomes about the the child or the person who's got the book and uh, and talks about the imagination I ask them to to draw a brain draw what's between your ears but of course everything is between our ears you know? <laughs> everything we see everything we perceive and so then it becomes so it's kind of strangely sort of quirky philosophical kind of idea really but then it extends from that into different uh kinds of ideas thinking about your networks the the, the people you know your your family the people who look after you perhaps and then to think about uh and then to think about ideas about uh, uh some ideas about techniques getting familiar with pens and paper and paint also there's an idea in there which is you know a very classic modernist idea about taking a line for a walk uh, which comes out of the Bauhaus but really it's trying to think about that idea taking a line for a walk if you think about what that means it really comes back to this idea of confidence it's really saying the like the the the, the line that you're taking from a walk is really your life and uh, and you're taking yourself for a walk and you're going to explore and you're going to explore the world uh, through visuality, through, through, 
you know, you're going to explore the world by journeying through it, by aging, if you like. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so it takes that idea as a bit of a metaphor uh, uh, for sort of exploring different kinds of things. And we go to different sort of places. We go to the shape emporium to see oh, the shapes feeding as if the shapes were animals in the zoo. The circles get out. <laughs> it invites people to do slightly impossible things. Of course, art is quite impossible, really. It's kind of, uh, it's based upon creating metaphors of things, really. But, yeah, uh, artists, about, artists yeah, see what other people think is impossible, but they do it. <laughs> Yeah, you can't. I mean, you can't really. You know, in an earlier book, I talked about Turner painting a sunset. Well, he can't make a sunset. He's actually moving paint around and creating a kind of illusion. He's an, an amazing magician. So it's this idea of the artist has been a bit of a magician, really, as well. And anyway, it it goes on in that kind of way. But in woven through it is this idea of um, woven through it is this idea of. Uh, of art making you powerful. I mean, I, the, so I, I, I rattle on like this. I mean, one of the things, one of the things last week, which was very powerful, was going to see uh, Mandy Barrett's uh, art room in that school in Gomersal. And, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an artist, although I'm a keen supporter of NSEAD. I do teach, but I teach a, uh, 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 postgraduates at London Metropolitan University so I don't know uh, an awful lot actually about uh, teaching at that level but one of the things I thought was so this so amazing is that Mandy had set up a, a specialist art room in the primary school well that specialist art room was uh, such a an amazing space because she was supporting all these other subjects that have been taught you know they were they were talking about the Tudor houses and she was making you know Tudor uh, they were making making images of Tudor houses but she was also doing maths she was also do, doing geometry she was doing history she was doing English it was a kind of it was a chance for the kids to reflect on the curriculum through art but through their own creativity and I thought, well, that is amazing because that is, in a way, um, that's a kind of space where we can think about things in the art room. <laughs> you know, we can think about our intelligence. And I, you know, and I just, I just feel very strongly that, um, you know, in a way, that that really provides a really interesting model for how we can think about you know, de-siloing all of these subjects. They're, they're in silos for reasons and for practicality and for accounting reasons, and also for, because of specialist knowledge. But actually, in education, it does need to go for a revolution because it's all about intelligence. And we do face a, bit, a, a sea change in how we're going to think about intelligence in the future. And actually, it's uh, undeniable that with our primary school uh, curriculum and primary school children, what we're talking about here is the intelligence of future generations. And I think, <laughs> weirdly, uh, or not weirdly, practically and sensibly, uh, Mandy's art room is the key to how we, <laughs> how we solve those problems, like a, like a think tank for how yeah. we think about art in, in schools in primary level, but also in secondary level, and probably in universities as well. I, mean, I thought it was such a, uh, it was such an amazing experience and also such a, uh, uh, a fountain, such a fantastic place. But I wanted to tell a story. I wanted to tell a story about this idea about power. I think it's slightly problematic sort of idea. You know, yes. powerful and the powerless. <laughs> but I wanted to, uh, I wanted to talk about it a little bit uh, in reference. <laughs> and I've got my got my stick here. I've got my. Father, oh, let's stand back. <laughs> I've got one of my father's French brushes here. The Delacroix, Angelica's in Delacroix. He bought these in Paris. My dad. It's quite terrifying, Rob, as it's coming out of the screen. <laughs> 
These are these are brushes that my dad bought in Paris in 1950, but he used to make his paintings. And I just want to show you here. I don't know if you can see this image very well, but this is my dad here. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, that's me as a kid. And this building here is Chelsea School of Art, and he's got two. Uh, he's got a sculpture by um, uh, Henry Moore in front. Of this, and this is where I spent a lot of time waiting for my father to come out of that building. And I'm going to show you my next slide now. So you've got Chelsea School of Art there. Dick and Eric. Uh, <laughs> these, are, these are quite heavy paintings. And <laughs> so in Chelsea School of Art, there was a large wooden staircase. It was actually built the year I was born. My dad took over this job running Chelsea School of Art in 1963, the year I was born. And uh, here he is walking down this staircase. There was a lift here, so you could go uh, to the third floor for the, uh, the lecture theatre, the library, printing graphics were on the first floor, painting was on the top floor in the studio where the studios had top light, uh, there was a canteen, sculpture and photography is waiting here here is his uh, best friend at the time, George Fullard. But the point about this is that I emerged into looking at my dad running this art school in Chelsea, Manmisa Road. He started life down the road in Broughton Road in Fulham and uh, in the 1930s. And uh, they lived in a one up, one down. <laughs> they lived in a, in a one up, one down. There were three kids, and my grandfather sold uh, sold uh, vegetables on North End Road Market. He'd been a, you know, been in the First World War, survived it miraculously, and uh, but they were dirt poor. They had absolutely nothing, and somebody uh, uh, must have been cut. I don't know. I I never really asked my dad this question. But he, uh, but my dad could draw a bit like Dürer. You know, I've got a, I've got, <laughs> I've got a drawing of my aunt Polly, who was just a sort of family friend who lived around the corner, and uh, he's drawn every hair. You know, it's like that hair. It's like Dürer. Mm. It's like the hair on the on the Dürer hair. It's an amazing image, and uh, and uh, somebody had the wit to say to him, you should go to art school. And he did, he went to Hammersmith Art School. He ended up at the Royal College during the Second World War. And that's where he met my mother. I had a similar experience in Margate. I made an exhibition about my mum, which is at the Academy a few years ago. But, uh, uh, and now I'm thinking about my dad. But the thing is, <laughs> this is a strange thing to say, but every, every uh, meal on our table when I was a kid, had been provided by the arts, art education or sales of paintings. And my dad used to say, my, my dad used to say a slightly counterintuitive thing. He used to say, just make art, sell it, and you'll be an artist. You know, you don't need to worry too much about art education, just, to, just make art and, and sell it. And it's because he was inspired by Turner. And Turner, Turner's dad was a barber in London. Uh, Turner's dad stuck up Turner's drawings in his barber shop. My dad wrote a book on Turner and he tells this story. And it's because my grandfather <laughs> sold my, uh, well, displayed probably rather than sold my dad's drawings on his fruit and veg market <laughs> in, 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 on North End Road in Fulham. And so he's obsessed with Turner. And, and Turner wasn't a, a posh boy. You know, Turner was a regular bloke. There was a film a few years ago, uh, which was a lovely film in a way, but I think he got to Turner completely wrong. It made him out to be a sort of idiot savant type mm. person. Like, uh, if you had met Turner, I think he would have been like Michael Caine or Alan Sugar or something like that. He was a totally self-made person. Strangely, you know, now I am a Royal Academician and I hang out with some of these Royal Academicians. Well, once in the 60s, they're all like that. You know, they're all they're all these kind of uh, they're all these kind of uh, self-made London 
lads really i mean they are mostly lads the older ones is changing now but uh but it is interesting that sort of thing because my dad came from nowhere and he you know became quite powerful so that relationship between success uh success in sticking food on the table building a career doing something which influences others my god teaching it really does that you know for those of you who are art teachers you are you are here's my little painting you are uh, <laughs> this is a little painting you are human rights workers you're human rights workers not just in the sense of uh not just in the sense of self and well-being and wellness and all that but you're human rights workers because you're making you'll you'll be contributing to kids uh, visual intelligence and their success and so so that sort of story about my dad is kind of uh, and about my mom is quite kind of important because it made them uh, it made them powerful not just in a curious way it made them actually quite powerful and that's where the title for this book comes from it's about uh, you know it, it's about discovering things thinking about things, thinking intelligently about things, pushing things further, some tools about how to push things further and to explore, you know, and that does make you kind of powerful. So there's something there, isn't there, about, you know, your, your dad said to you, just make art, sell it, and you're an artist. He made <laughs> art, somebody saw it, they saw him, they saw him as an artist, and they kind of, Put him on the path to that that well, path he, had, he had a great art education and actually so did turner because turner went to the royal academy you know and they became the youngest royal academician at 27 you know so so uh so actually it, they did have a, they did have a proper art education you know? so, for you and then my dad's art education i mean and my mother's uh they they met at the royal college during the second world war I mean, it totally transformed their lives. It totally transformed their lives. And turn and our kid uh, and my, you know, my my two sisters. We we all went to we all went to art school. They've done different. They've done different things. My sister, one of my sisters was a psychotherapist. The other one was a kind of organising sort of genius type person who ended up working for the Royal Collections. We wouldn't have had the lives that we've had without our parents' experience of our education. My uh, Je Jesse's here, but both our kids have done. Uh, one went to CSM, the other studied uh, uh, training to be an architect. Went to the Bartlett. Well, they did. They did their art GCSE. My God, if they hadn't done their art GCSE, it wouldn't be. They wouldn't be doing what they're doing now. So it's uh, it's critical, you know, art education. So you saw the art made people powerful from a young age, sort of standing on that that staircase at Chelsea. Chelsea well, I did. I was, you know, I was lucky. I also believe in, you know, you got to see it to be it. And I did. You know, I've totally, you know, in a weird way, I've totally been immersed in the arts uh, since a child. And I'm always interested in people's stories about how they first picked up a pencil because it wasn't really a problem for me you know and and uh, but it's so important that you know in, in your report I you know reading about uh, taking kids to museums you know we've got to uh, education really in all of these subjects is uh, is one generation showing the next generation the rich me menu of life and saying look here you go and and the other thing about this story about my dad is that he was good at uh, he was he was good at he was great at writing. He wrote a book on Matisse, wrote a book about Turner. He was very good at mathematics, but he 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 uh, he he was he kind of excelled at art. Was really good at art. And what we've got to get into is is celebrating our children for what they are really into, what they really love. You know, if they're really into mathematics, they're really into cooking, they're really into uh, design, 
you know, you just need to bring the forces of education around those interests and, and that will make them successful, actually. So actually, I, I've got, I'm, I always have to go to the serious political points, so you, you, you'll forgive me for doing it, won't you? But um, I think this book's really important now. I think, I think the, the purpose of this book, um, the sort of stealth uh, weapon that it is to, to build power, I think we need it more than we have ever done. And that's saying something. And I'm I'm going to sort of take you back to 2013, if I may, um, when, uh, I don't know if you remember, you, you made a special work for NCAD, um, for AD magazine. Um, Sophie's nodding along there, our, our AD editor. Um, so it, we, we featured a poster, you know, your your poster the work the, with the work, about your child pencils, etc. But the, the work you made was a spoof manifesto. Um, and it was a pretty scathing commentary, I've got to say, on what the government's real art strategy was. And there's a fantastic photo of you uh, pretending to be a hapless uh, uh, aide or, or whatever, revealing the strategy. Um, but, you know, based on what they were actually doing at the time and what you believe would come to pass. And looking back, I've got to say, everything in that spoof is absolutely spot on. It has all happened. Um, you know, it has, it has. So my question really, and thinking about the book is, um, you know, there, there are lots of lovely pages where you invite children to show how things feel and sound and to, to take ideas and make them visible, which is actually, you know, pretty sophisticated, actually. Um, but another thing I love about this book is it doesn't talk down to children. It takes them to the, the highest places if they want to go there. Um, but yeah, if I ask you to draw how education policy feels, how it affects us, all of us, artists, society, everyone, not that artists aren't society, obviously, um, what would it look like, Bob? <laughs> draw our education policy. All right, well, could you, do, could you describe what that might look like? <laughs> I've probably got an image of it in here somewhere. <laughs> I'll, find, I'll find something quickly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, uh, yeah, maybe it looks a bit like this. Maybe it looks a bit like that. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, I think uh, it's, uh, oh, it's like this, actually. This is my daughter's drawing of... Uh, Pink. Uh, she made a pink on pink. Oh, no. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's a portrait of me. I can see there. Lots of dysfunction going on there. I mean, I think the thing about it is, if you were, you know, I, you know, I am totally pro mathematics. I loved mathematics. I love logic. I love patterns, uh, uh, and uh, and I. Uh, one of the funny things at the moment uh, on my MA course that I've got an amazing, uh, you know, we have lots of, uh, you know, mature students on that course. So one of my students is a guy who's got a doctorate in some kind of pure physics, which I don't understand. And, uh, and he's, a, he's, he's an extraordinary guy. He's, he's been teaching at Oxford <laughs> for a few years. But he's had some sort of crisis in his life. I don't, I don't know quite what. But um, he's decided to stop doing that and uh, come to uh, study his MA fine art with, uh, with us at London Metropolitan University. And I said to him, what on earth am I going to teach you? <laughs> you know, you're much cleverer than I am, you know, like on every level, probably. And... Uh, but over the year, my God, it's been so interesting seeing his paintings and uh, and uh, and seeing his development, uh, uh, his development as an artist. And then he's and then over time, he's begun to talk about the paintings it, it, with a kind of with a, in, to, in relationship to his mathematics. And uh, I think it's going to be somebody we're going to all hear about. It's very interesting. But I think. Uh, but I think this thing about our, uh, you know, our intelligence, our logic, what that curriculum look like is going to look like. I think it's going to 
I think it's going to be necessarily change. And I'm, you know, I'm not the person with the tools to create a, a kind of a overview of uh, how education is going to be, but it is going to change. We can see it changing. It's changing now, isn't it? Look, we're all on Zoom. Before the pandemic, we wouldn't have been on Zoom. That that has enormous problems uh, with it. But that that kind of sea change in how we think about communication, all of those things, that is going to have a big effect on education. So I think there's lots of opportunity there for bright sparks to think about a slightly less, so I don't think we ought to get rid of all the subject areas, but a slightly less siloed education, which really thinks about intelligence. I think that's, that's definitely something that can be pursued at the moment and is an opportunity. And I think in the arts, and here, you know, including music and, and uh, drama and all, all of the arts in that, uh, that's really going to be central to it, really, I think, because it's the kind of, uh, it's the reflective space to think about our intelligence. And that's what I'm hoping the book would will be you know there's no there are no correct correct answers to anything in the book uh, the uh, if if the books can be filled out and shared digitally and inspire other pe other people's drawings inspire others by the book that would be a great thing and it will go off in different areas just like art does in a way well that's a vision of hope isn't it which uh, well, <laughs> oh, well, and we... i'm an optimist you know i yeah. really I really think we we do it is possible to think about that. I mean, but we've got to do it. Uh, we've got to do it because uh, you know we do face some shocking problems out there. And I think I think what we need to do, uh, what we need to do, and art can really do this, is make an economy which is more human shaped. I talked about that a bit last night. You know, we've we've created an economy which is very capital shaped. The danger is uh, we're going to create a, a world with AI and capital brought together, which will be really difficult for human beings. But actually, strangely, I think artificial intelligence and think, rethinking our, our intelligence, if we think we need to make the world nature-shaped we, and, and human-shaped, we'll make a better we'll make a space a place for ourselves and think about how our economies are uh, the world that we want to live in you know has to be not just about capital and just not just about efficiency it has to be about our humanity and uh our the animals and plants <laughs> that we live on the world and uh, and their their kind of uh intelligence if you like well if any if any section of the population can make a space that's human shaped nature shaped it's got to be the artists and if if your, if your book achieved the, the grandest ambition it could which for me would be every child an artist and and, under, and recognizing it and feeling it and 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 having that power then uh, we know it, it can happen and that that's uh, that's hope right there just well, in, in in the very fact of the power we have if we choose to use it um yeah it, it i we, we have to we have to kind of look to to that power and that's definitely an ncad message and i will also say that looking back through the archive that we we're talking about earlier that goes back to 1888 um it it, it cannot be extinguished um what what artists do it, it does survive um, but I've got to say, for me, looking through that archive, looking at the challenges of uh, over 100 years, uh, we've got some pretty unique ones now. So this book is here, folks, to, to help us uh, be powerful. And you mentioned music as being, you know, thinking about that. I, I know you have got some music for us, haven't you? you would you want to <laughs> well, you share it, will you? Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully you've been doing well, I've, I've... I've, I've rattled on a bit too long, haven't I? But hopefully we've we'll. joined some faces. But yeah, so Jesse and I, with the Apathy Band, have been working on 
creating Art Makes People Powerful, the musical. And we've actually recorded it. <laughs> we've recorded it at Toe Rag Studios, which is where the White Stripes recorded the Elephant album in Homerton. Wow, it's wow. all on analog tape. And we'd like to try yeah, and sing you. <laughs> we'd like to try and sing you one of the songs now. <laughs> And everyone else, scribbled, quite crazy, cool. Hooray. It'll, it won't work on Zoom, but we'll see. We'll see. It might work. You never know. But it goes like this. Every boy and every girl. Every boy Art education, 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 art education. Actually, Jesse, around the world, people do need an art education, but there's some pretty dreadful things going on in Iran and in Afghanistan. Let's sing it. Every, every girl, girl around the world, every girl around the world, every girl around the world deserves a decent education. Education, decent education, education, decent education. Anyway, <laughs> you get the you get the idea. <laughs> we do. I <laughs> I hope you're all singing Art Education, the chorus there. <laughs> it's all gone quiet. Oh, she's muted. Uh, <laughs> I think you're, are we muted? No, anyway. I, I, was, I was muted by the host because I think she thought I might be spoiling the, um, <laughs> my, my out tune singing. You're, you're not wrong, Diane, you're not wrong. Oh, thank you. I hope we've got well, a nice crisp recording of that. But if not, I'm sure there's there's a little <laughs> studio. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Bob, have we got time for a couple of questions? Because I think yeah, we'll yeah, of course. Yeah, I'd love to uh, answer a couple of questions. Yeah, and then if we could do that, and then we'll finish up with anyone who's got um, a little crowd to um, hold up. We'll hold up the crowd and. <laughs> um. Diane says she wasn't muting me on purpose. I don't believe her because she's done it so many times in team meetings that, um, yeah, you just got to keep me quiet. Right, questions, guys, have you got questions? What I might do, Diane, wave in, say no, 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 if that's wrong, but I might invite people to um, unmute, put their hands up and unmute and ask their question direct. Mm. So that's my no, people are more than welcome to, aren't they? And oh, yeah. if you can't unmute for any reason, feel free to pop it into the chat as well and we can read it out, obviously. If you want to kind of raise a hand or if you don't feel, yeah, if you don't, I'm going to, I'm going to scan the chat. Uh, but if you want to, you want to unmute and put your question in your own voice. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll just say it's not really a question, but it might lead to one. <laughs> I, I think we've had such a, like three, four years where we just had no experience, which is physical. Your book feels, I saw it yesterday and I could see how fummed it was and how much it, be, it was becoming essentially a thing, an object having its sort of own little life and conversation. But it really made me go, I want one. So my question, yeah. I suppose, is well, <laughs> are you thinking it's for children or <laughs> maybe young people? What? If no, it isn't for adults, can you make one for adults, please? <laughs> well, I did. I, I have made a, there's another book called uh, You Are an Artist, which is Ooh. similar in a way. It's for, it was with Thames and Hudson uh, during the pandemic, it came out. That has an essay in it, and it's, just, it's, a diff, it's not an activity book in that sense, but it has got uh, 40 six I think things to do in it which some of them overlap like there's the 
loop drawing exercise and uh, so but this but this book is a sketchbook mm-hmm. essentially you know it's an activity book it's got it's got prompts in it uh, but it's actually lots of blank pages and it's really there for anybody I think it's it, it, you know if you've got you know anybody could have a go with this and uh, and have fun with it and take it somewhere uh, yeah. so it's kind of, that thing about not talking down to children I was th- trying to find a good voice with the editor where we were talking to children um, on the same plane, if you like. And uh, and I think that means that it's actually, it works in a way for anybody. It you does. Know, it somehow does. that kind of voice, you know, if you can construct that kind of voice. Um, I mean, you see it in my work, you know, I, mm-hmm. I make work with text. And I'm very influenced by conceptual artists of the 1970s. But my thing has always been, I don't want to make art for a small percentage of the population. I want everybody to kind of be able to get it. So it's that thing about making some, trying to find a voice where people can understand it, you know. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. And in fact, Paul Paul Carney on the chat is saying he can't wait to get hold of his copy and get going. So uh, yeah, Paul, make sure you um, share uh, on on so, social media, which where you are present, uh, what you've done, we'd love to see it. Um, mm-hmm. I saw on the chat there's a question about boys, isn't it? it how, is. to, how to get boys in, to study the arts? I mean, I I don't know what the problems are, and I don't have any specific answers to that. But uh, it's an interesting question, and uh, obviously needs to be addressed, doesn't it? But uh, um, it is. It's a big question for our subject, where we've got a growing gender gap uh, in terms of I've, who's I've taking that question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, just uh, yeah, it's got lots of people want to get the book. Um, lots of lots of claps. I think people feel that they've they've there aren't questions. They just want to start drawing. So shall we? Um, Shall we share what we've drawn? Those that have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What have we got? What have we got? If it's possible to see. Oh, folks, if you're, if you're able. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, <laughs> oh Fred. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Michelle. Very good. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, Freya Clark. Yeah. Wow, that's looking great, Freya Clark. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. Is so different. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The point about the point sure. about that exercise is uh, uh, to be serious about is post hoc rationalisation. You know, we do, we you know, as I said earlier, we live our life pre hoc rationalising what we're going to do. Oh, I love that. Who's that? Emmy's Hall. That's the <laughs> <laughs> but but actually, <laughs> when you draw these eyes across the page and then you join them up, it's when you draw the profiles, if you like, when you find when the faces begin to have characters and and then maybe they're looking at each other or something that's kind of uh that's that kind of post hoc rationalization idea that's great great evil well those of you who are kind of sitting at the side of football pitches and in staff meetings and all the other things that I know people do uh when they're on zooms um do do you know have a go have a go yourself um, share it with us. We've got Jay's there. Jay's is coming on. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Very good. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> right, <Carla>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, share them with us. Spread the word. Um, it starts here. Starts Everything starts somewhere. So um, let's see how many people you can inspire by being inspired by Bob tonight. You are always inspiring to us, Bob, um, because you you take uh, the important issues of our time and our subject and you present them in a completely compelling way. Um, and that's what the book does. And I do think it's important. And yes, Sophie, it is going into the NSEAD archive along with the 135 uh, year strong collection of important, significant, documents and books um, for our subject. So there you go. There's that. There's a little hall of fame for you, Bob. Sold one. <laughs> Thank you, sold one, yeah. 
<laughs> thank you so much so much for, for talking to us tonight and yeah all those people who are watching this, this recording um get get drawing get, get drawing and start sharing and um, we uh diane's put the deadline in there which i'm not i'm, I'm not sure what the deadline is uh diane what's the deadline next friday so yeah. we'll we'll draw someone a name at random next friday so yeah please do share um our social media on any platforms we'll find them um but share them then and we can um the winner. Hello, thank you. Those of you who are teachers, imagine you're all art teachers for all the work that you do. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you all and have a fantastic evening, everyone. And thanks for bearing with us on our little technical uh, blip at the beginning. There has to be one, doesn't there? <laughs> Just to prove that we need to use our hands. <laughs>